All right, so we've gone through, uh, we've gone all the way through Ralston's methods. Uh, fourth order range cut A. It's just, it's just crunching through some numbers to get the coefficients. I don't, I don't, um, I don't want to uh, spend too much time, so we don't have. I, I think uh, fourth order. That's, um, that's getting to the point where you know it really just ought to be done on by computers. We have them for a reason, uh, after all. But but what I do want to show is this plot, showing a plot of the results with the slope field and the solution because I think it gives some context because uh, we can crunch numbers a lot, but if we don't have any clue what we're doing, it's meaningless. And so this picture gives us a great idea of what we're doing. So first of all, uh, this slope field that I've plotted out here uh, in the background, this is exactly what's given by dy dt. And so all you have to do to plot out that slope field is just generate a grid of uh, a, a grid of x's and then a grid of y's and you just uh, and you just plot out the slope which is given by dy dt this is given um, you just plot it out at each point where you're given it and you can plot that as an arrow and so that's what I've done here and that the longer arrows just indicate you know you, you have a little bit more they all go the same amount in the x direction and you just have a little more in the y direction sometimes okay so that's the slope field and you see all of these solutions where we so we start with the starting point and the starting point is is uh, uh, time equals zero y is equal to one so all of these methods start exactly at the right point so the first thing we need to look at so is is I guess the analytical solution the analytical solution is this green solution it follows right along here you can see it's that's the perfect that's what we're going for uh, Euler's method, first of all. Euler's method, um, it goes down here, and we, we have a really big step size for these, um, for how rapidly this is changing, but Euler's method goes down here, and it's pretty slow to respond, and in fact, we've got the, the function changing a ton here, and Euler's method uh, hasn't even caught up yet. I think maybe it will the next step start trying to, to catch up here, but it's still way down here, and so Euler's method is, is uh, quite a ways off. Um, Hoyne's method is this um, yellow one, and and really I think we can look at Hoyne's method. All, all three of these, Hoyne's, um, Ralston, and Midpoint. Uh, all the Midpoint is this red line. Ralston is is this light blue line. We can really look at those all together. There you've got very similar. They're all second order runge cut of methods, um, and they've got fairly similar uh, fa fairly similar behavior. Uh, but then, if we go ahead and look at the classical uh, runge cut of fourth order, uh, we're way better. Uh, you see where this where this function changes a lot here. Um, the fourth order runge cut is actually almost keeping up with it. It knows it knows what is going on, and these these other ones are sort of behind the curve. So, um, and and the other thing I'll point out is uh, even though this step size, these are the only points. This point. Um, this point, this point, and this final point. These are the only points that we're that we're even evaluating at, at, and so it really couldn't be a whole lot better. It couldn't be much better. So the the fourth order runge cut uh, definitely um, is more accurate than all the others, but that makes sense because we're using, um, in a sense, even though we're only we're only uh, plotting it here and here. With the fourth order range cutout, we're sampling points all over in the middle, so we know what the slope field is doing, and that's why we're able to make this better prediction. But anyway, so there is the the final plot with all of the methods um, methods shown on it.